So we talked about the receivers being a key element of PCI Express performance. The transmitter is also key for um, um, being able to provide the proper level of de-emphasis for PCI Express Gen 3. Um, de-emphasis is simply uh, a mechanism where instead of having equalization solely be the responsibility of the receiver, we have essentially transmitter-based equalization that is in the form of, of de-emphasis, or other standards refer to this as pre-emphasis, where we have more energy that's put into the transition bits that are transmitted into the channel that helps compensate for the step response of that channel. Now for Gen 1, we had pre-emphasis, and it was um, specified at minus 3.5 dB and was fixed. For Gen 2, we had two different levels of de-emphasis, and those two different levels were minus uh, 3.5 and, and minus 6 dB. The root complex device, typically a motherboard, would be in control of specifying which de-emphasis level it would tend to prefer. And again, since we support a short client channel as well as a long server channel, uh, we would tend to see that 3.5 dB would be used for the shorter channels and 6 dB de-emphasis would be used for the longer channels. For Gen 3, things get a little bit more complicated. We have two different elements that are at play. One is a set of 10 presets or 11 presets that we have in the standard itself. And those presets uh, are used for testing the emphasis levels as well as setting what we think are some of, the, some of the ones that are more likely to be used in a given scenario. But in addition, one of the things that, that's new about PCI Express 3.0 is that we have a back channel of communication that now exists between the receiver and the transmitter. And so during link training, the receiver is able to negotiate with the transmitter in order to ensure that the level of de-emphasis that is provided by the transmitter helps, to, helps the receiver's equalizer achieve the optimal eye opening. And the receiver is thus able to modify the transmit de-emphasis coefficients in a way that essentially allows PCI Express to have about 32 different de-emphasis levels. And this helps to really fine tune the de-emphasis level for the specifics of a, of a given instance of a channel. So that's one of the challenges of PCI Express is making sure that the, all the de-emphasis levels are properly tested and that that, then that that back channel of communication also exists and operates appropriately. Um, one of the areas where we see challenges as well with PCI Express 3.0 is when the device shifts from 2.5 gigatransfers per second to 8 gigatransfers per second. We refer to this as the speed change. Now typically protocol tools that are look, looking at packet and transaction information don't necessarily have a lot of good visibility around the specific speed change itself. It takes those tools a little bit longer to settle. And this is where having some protocol decode capability on the oscilloscope that supports this 128, 130 bit encoding scheme that's new for PCI Express 3.0 can be really handy. So when you look at tools and evaluate tools, you want to make sure that in your oscilloscopes that you use, in addition for being able to test the signal integrity of the link for transmitter analysis, for example, that you probably ought to uh, budget for your devices to also include uh, for your test tools to have this uh, protocol decode capability because that can provide you with some visibility to errors or problems that might exist as your device attempts to shift from 2.5 gigatransfers per second to the Gen 3 speed of 8 gigatransfers per second.